Canterbury Revival. We're going to talk about that. Uh, some are touting this as a great move of God. However, others, and I don't want you to think that uh, it's not like I'm. Uh, it, it's not like I'm the only pastor telling you what I'm about to tell you. There's been many other pastors from many different sh- denominational stripes, if you want to call it that, that have been warning against uh, what's going on or what is supposedly going on at Asbury University. It isn't wrong to be cautious not it's biblical to be cautious matter of fact that's a wise thing to do we see even for church leaders hey prove they need to be proven you know the bible says to prove all things uh one of the things that's concerning we talked about first is that um uh i was rather alarmed at the lack of bible preaching and the almost exclusive use of music it's very hard for me to call something a, a, a revival when uh, the word of God isn't the main focus. Get Psalms 138. I'll tell you why I say that from this principle in the Bible. Psalms 138, verse number two. Bible says, I will worship toward thy holy temple and praise thy name for thy loving kindness and for thy truth. Uh, That's great. Praising God's name. Watch what's watch what this is connected to with this semicolon here. That comes right after the word truth. It says, for thou hast magnified thy word above all thy name. I do have a problem with everyone swinging and swaying and saying the name of Jesus and claiming the name of Jesus when it says that his word, there's something that's higher and magnified even more than his name, and that's his word. That's why we preach the word of God. It's not the words of the pastor. It's not the words of the people. It's not the words of a church leader. It's God's word. This is the preeminence. Thy word is true. I said earlier. (laughs) I don't think it's too harsh of an an analogy. I, I use these analogies sometimes to draw out a truth an extreme analogy, but in the sixties they had Woodstock. It was all sex, drugs, and rock and roll and free love. It seems like Asbury, it's charismatic music and tongues and emotionalism. And did we sign, did we just sign up America for another experience that's void of the truth from the word of God? What's wrong with music? There's nothing wrong with music, but music can be used wrongly. And I'm going to show you why we should be cautious. Go to Ezekiel 28. I want you to be able to try all things. uh, Well, we'll get to that thought a little bit later. But that's why I went to uh, Psalm 138. The Bible has to be the focus. Bible teaching, Bible preaching. You've got to know what the Bible says. But on the music side, look at Ezekiel 28. Verse number 13. Uh, Bible says, Thou hast been in Eden, the garden of God. Speaking of Lucifer. Every precious stone was thy covering. The sardis, topaz, and the diamond, the beryl, the onyx, and the jasper, the sapphire, the emerald, and the carbuncle, and gold. The workmanship of thy tabors and of thy pipes was prepared in thee in the day that thou wast created. Satan is more than capable of creating mass deception, mass deception through music. 
I love music. I want good godly music. But I'm also cautious when something is painted as a great move of God, when it's largely music driven. And it's not like you have people sing in the old hymns of the faith. Is that the only thing you can sing? No, but it would be nice to have one. You can sing spiritual songs. I write them. I've written them. We have special music. All that is fine. We'll, we'll do all that. But the music's concerning. If you took away, let me ask this, took away 100% of the music and replaced it just with Bible preaching, do you think you would draw the same crowd? I don't think you would. If you took away uh, 20%, if you just had 20% music and 80% Bible preaching, do you think you'd draw the same crowd? Kelly has brought this point up before. People say, look, we're good Bible preaching church. His answer is always the same. Well, you found one. <laughs> Well, we're going to preach the Bible, but you know what? If we flip the table around and we just brought in a big name CCM artist, I guarantee you we can pack the house. Now, I couldn't do that with a straight face in front of you. But that's what's happening. And that should be, that should be alarming. So, but I will say that um, I did get many reports that there were Bible preachers and there were Bible witnesses outside of that chapel area. So I'm not trying to paint that it was this big bad thing all around. There were, there's always going to be a remnant. And anywhere people gather, there will always be, until the church is caught out, there will always be a gospel witness showing up at big events like this. And praise the Lord for but I am concerned that charismatic confusion took center stage over good biblical preaching and, and Bible doctrine. Second Timothy three, we all know the verse, all scripture is given by inspiration of God and is profitable for doctrine, for reproof, for correction, for instruction in righteousness, that the man of God may be perfect, thoroughly furnished unto all good works. Where's the scripture? There were many clips I've seen. There's some young boys out there preaching on the campus. And you know what they're preaching? Tongues. And without and within five to six minutes, minutes, some 20-something novice got a bunch of immature, spirit, spiritually immature people together and in less than 10 minutes, had them babbling and telling them that they received the Holy Spirit. I think we should be concerned about this. If you haven't seen it, I'm not saying you need to see it, but it's a sight to see. So what about the Holy Spirit? We talked about him this morning. Uh, I did a little bit of research. Many other pastors have as well. 1905, 1908, 1921, 1950, 1970, 2006, 2023. Apparently, Holy Ghost revivals broke out in the month of February in all those years. I don't know. It seems like a, a planned pattern to me. In 58, 1992, some revivals broke out in March. So I guess the, the silly question, I don't think it's a silly question. It's silly when I read this, but does the Holy Ghost only show up in February and March? I don't think he does. There's many conservative, uh, just some independent Baptist college. It, it, so, so this revival is supposed to spread now. Is it, is it going to show up at Pensacola Christian College? Is it going to show up at West Coast? Is it going to show up at Heartland? Is it going to show up at conservative? Or is the Holy Spirit only moved when it's charismatics and tongue talkers?
Has the Holy Spirit become the new shiny object? God help us treat the Holy Spirit that way. Or refer to him that way. I'm concerned when people say authentic faith, when that always results in a CCM concert where there's dancing, crying, screaming, emotionalism, falling onto the ground. Go to Acts 2. Because they're all stuck in Acts 2. That more false doctrine that comes out of Acts 2 because it's not rightly divided. But let's look at what happened in Acts 2. In verse number 1, And when the day of Pentecost was fully come, and they were all with one accord in one place. So wait, we get that. And suddenly there came a sound from heaven as of a rushing mighty wind, and it filled all the house where they were dancing and crying and jumping and flapping around. No, they were they were sitting. They were just, they were sitting there. And there appeared unto them tongues like as of fire, and it sat upon each of them, and they were all filled with the Holy Ghost. And began to speak with other tongues. That would be known languages as the Spirit gave them utterance. I believe that happened. Do you believe that happened? That happened. These people were not babble and incoherent. They were speaking in another tongue. And if you had, if I saw some self-control and some order, I'm more inclined to say the Holy Spirit's behind me. But when I see a video of 20-something-year-olds getting other people babbling, Scooby-Dooby-Doo. Where are you? It's not the Holy Ghost. It's cartoon Christianity, folks. It's not the Holy Spirit. Do you think in the book of Acts, do you think they had uh, Galatians, Ephesians, Philippians, Romans? Do you think they had all these books to turn to? No, they didn't. How in the world, what did God use to confirm what that what was being said or taught was real? He used sign miracles through that transitional period. But now we have a more sure word of prophecy. You can go to the Bible, you can extract something out. And just turn it into false doctrine real easy. You've got to be able to rightly divide it. Go to 1 John 4. The Bible says in verse number 1, Beloved, 1 John 4. 1 John 4, 1. Beloved, believe not every spirit, but try the spirits, whether they are of God. Why? Because many false prophets are gone out into the world hereby know ye the spirit of god every spirit that confesseth that jesus christ is come in the flesh is of god and every spirit that confesseth not that jesus christ is come in the flesh is not of god this is that spirit of antichrist where have you have heard that it should come and now even now already is it in the world you know why we must try the spirit because God wants us to be able to discern if it's an unholy one. And I believe there was a lot of unholiness there. How do you have 3,000 souls being saved in the book of Acts without TikTok? Without social media? How does that happen? The Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit. There's a big difference between... You run hashtag Asbury Revival and you get 70 million views on TikTok. That's what that thing's bringing in. That's a big number. But we have to be 
We have to understand that does not equate into 70 million souls being saved. That's 70 million views. What does that mean? It doesn't mean everybody got saved. It means some people are seeing some things. We need to think of people in terms of their soul not in terms of followers and views and clicks. These are people with souls. Let's not lose sight of that. We plan things. Get a Bible conference coming up. We're going to plan for that. Invite preachers out. Bring people into a room. We, we all do it. Everybody does it. You plan your church services out. You're going to have a big revival breakout. And the Holy Spirit's going to move. I don't think I'm going to have to make an announcement to all the students that classes are canceled. Head over to the chapel. The Holy Spirit's moved. I, wouldn't you think the Holy Spirit would just draw them there? I mean. Well, now we're going to cancel it. Well, what are you going to cancel the Holy Spirit now? <laughs> like, if we, you don't want to keep the kids out of class too long? What is, what is that? What is that? I think it's man getting in the way of God is my personal opinion. And just because something goes viral, it doesn't mean it's Holy Spirit led. We talked about this this morning. You and I have the Holy Spirit and we really can. If you... Do you believe you've got the Holy Spirit? You're saved. You got baptized with it. We all, we all, we're, we're there. We get it. We understand that. You can be used in a mighty way by God as an individual Christian. You know that? You don't go to Asbury and go into that chapel and finally get all of the Holy Spirit. It doesn't work that way. If you've trusted Christ, you have the Holy Spirit. It quickens. It imparts the new birth, it draws, Holy Spirit testifies of Christ, guides into all truth, shows the things of Christ, reproves, cures our justification, produces sanctification, places us in the body of Christ. The Holy Spirit's real, we believe the Holy Spirit. But we have to stop making this emotionalism into, now we're just going to assign it to the Holy Spirit. Titus 2. Titus 2. Verse number 13. Titus 2. 13. Looking for revival? No. Looking for miracles? No. Looking for signs? No. Looking for wonders? No. Looking for that blessed hope. The glorious appearing of our great God and Savior, the Lord, uh, our Savior, Jesus Christ, who gave himself for us that he might redeem us from all iniquity and purify unto himself a peculiar people, zealous of good works. If we truly have an awakening of spiritual things, our look will be upward, a hope that is blessed. Signs were given to the Jews. They required a sign. And as much as I would like to see something happen here in a big way, We need to be careful that we don't get duped by an experience down here. Because we are largely interested in a soul that's revived and on fire for God. And that blessed hope gets our distraction, gets our eyes on Jesus and not on the things that are happening down here. So many Christians have gotten derailed because they got caught up in some political movement or some social movement or some movement where God says the church is the pillar and ground of truth. He's writing letters to churches. The New Testament church is the one that's 
fulfilling the Great Commission. I don't know if God ever wrote a letter to a college. First Thessalonians. First Thessalonians. Look at verse, uh, chapter 4, 1 Thessalonians 4, verse number 16. For the Lord himself shall descend from heaven with a shout, with the voice of the archangel, and with the trump of God, and the dead in Christ shall rise first. Then we, which are alive and remain, shall be caught up together with them in the clouds to meet the Lord in the air, and so shall we ever be with the Lord. Wherefore? Comfort one another with these words. I think we need the blessed hope revived. We're going to meet the Lord in the air someday. That's something to be. That's something to be hopeful about. That's that's comforting. <laughs> we got more people that are thinking. They used to say. In Kelly's day. Here there in the air. That was the way they said goodbye. As Christians. Because they had a view in mind. They had a blessed hope. A lot easier to deny ungodly living and ungodly a worldly lust if we're constantly having our focus upward. Good reminder. Live soberly, righteously, godly in this present world. My Lord can come anytime. You don't want to be caught. Uh oh. Shouldn't have been doing that, Lord. <laughs> that wouldn't be good. Wouldn't be good. So where's the fruit? Where's the fruit? Go to Hebrews 13. We want long-lasting fruit, and we just don't want short-term emotions. We want some fruit. That's what the Holy Spirit produces in our lives. And if a revival truly swept across a campus, like many are claiming, I don't think it would be too far of a stretch for me to say this entire semester, most of the student body would not be actively living in sin at all why because the holy spirit just showed up it would be impossible the holy spirit has fell upon that place for young people to be actively involved in as much in, in at least as much sin as right as as we're using the holy spirit right you get saved holy spirit's inside you do you sin i'm sure you do i do should we be sinning as much? Well, no. You got the Holy Spirit. Talked about that this morning. Um, Hebrews 13, verse number four. Here's what it says. Marriage is honorable in all, and the bed undefiled. But whoremongers and adulterers, God will judge. I bet all the young gals and guys are, are, are fine now with, no hugging and no kissing and no intimate relations uh, until marriage. I bet you all the couples now on that on that campus, I mean, they've just bought into that. Why? The Holy Spirit fell. I bet you they got no problem with uh, with the school. I'm sure the school will make a public statement that says, hey, we want to make sure all the young couples have a chaperone on their date just to keep their testimony above reproach. So they don't get into something that they shouldn't be doing. And there's always accountability. You think that's going to happen? Probably one of the most alarming problems that many pastors have uh, is the point I'm going to make now. And that's in Romans chapter number one. Romans one. The Holy Spirit only leads people into truth. He doesn't lead people into error or sin.
when reports come out and evidence comes out that you have the LBGTQ and the queer lifestyle involved in leading and involved in leading worship and ministries on that campus, you don't have to be too smart to realize that the Holy, the Holy Spirit is not leading those people to do that. That's not, that's not of God. And they should have a fresh understanding. Romans 1. I mean, verse 24. Wherefore God also gave them up to uncleanness through the lust of their own hearts to dishonor their own bodies between themselves who changed the truth of God into a lie and worshiped and served the creature more than the creator who is blessed forever. Amen. For this cause, God gave them up unto vile affections, for even their women did change the natural use into that which is against nature. And likewise, also the men leaving the natural use of the woman burned in their lust one toward another, men with men working that which is unseemly, and receiving in themselves the recompense of their error, which was me. All of this is a work of the devil. If that college does not come out with a public statement to rebuke all of that, and to call any student that is involved in that lifestyle to repentance, am I the only one that thinks that's off? I am afraid America has now just entered in one of the biggest ecumenical pushes for the queer, gay, lesbian, LBGTQ agenda within Christianity. I really fear that. Because my, my gut's telling me, the Holy Spirit's telling me for sure, that's wrong. And my gut's telling me that that whole thing that happened at Asbury is going to start spreading. And it's a big ecumenical push to get all of the queers and all the lesbians in unity with, we're Christians too. We're saved too. You're not. You're not saved. If they're living that lifestyle, they need the gospel. They don't need More people patting them on the back saying love is love. We don't. It's not a work of God. It's a work of the devil. Last point I'd like to make tonight. Concern, a couple more points, I guess, concerning fruit. If you have true revival, God puts a new song in your heart. Any amount of research that you were to do online, and it's not just me. There are many pastors that say the same thing. If you're involved in Hillsong, Bethel, Jesus culture, and Elevation, it is not of God. Those, those leaders in, the, in, in that music genre and that, that whole philosophy, it's not of God. It is not. They are bringing people, and it's a gateway drug to new age mysticism. These people are wicked. Stephen Furtick runs this whole elevation thing. That man is not of God. And the folks that are involved in Bethel and Hillsong and Jesus culture, it's the same deal. All of them. They're getting New Age mysticism into the church through their music. It's planned, people. It's planned. They take you through phases of that music. Phases. On purpose to get your emotions drawn up and then it climaxes 
and they call that their praise. It's, it's, it's the Pied Piper. So if true revival swept across that college, that music, that culture would be gone. But it's not gone. It's growing. That is very, that's dangerous. That's dangerous. If the Holy Spirit swept across that campus, I would expect the dress code to change to at least what the college had in the 1970s. Women in feminine attire, dresses, blouses, skirts, men in trousers, jeans. But we can't even get to covered up with skinny jeans anymore. It's not even, hey, we're just spray painting on like the, the, the spray paint. The spray paint can says jeans. And you just spray it on the girls. Nothing is left of the imagination anymore. They, it's, they're spray. You can't even get that anymore. Because it's skinny jeans and they're all ripped open. <laughs> I thought we weren't supposed to uncover our thigh. As Christians... I'm a 19-year-old unsaved person. Guess what Christian college I think I want to go to? Because it's appealing to the eye. If the Holy Ghost moved over that campus, all of those girls would have a dress code change immediately. And they wouldn't need one sermon. All they would need to know is, the Holy Spirit so moved in my life. Oh no, I'm naked. There's no verse. It's the Holy Spirit. You know, the same Holy Spirit that you claim causes you to jump and dance and giggle like a clown and howl like a wolf and act uncontrollably. You don't have a verse in the Bible for that. Okay, so you don't need a verse. All you need is the Holy Spirit to convict your heart. And now you don't have a problem. You're happy to dress modestly. You're happy to dress feminine if you're a woman and masculine if you're a male wife. Holy Spirit. Now, do you think that college is going to come out with a new dress code? It's the perfect time. Revival just broke out. I want our testimony to matter. And I'm concerned that having a good testimony anymore just can mean whatever you want it to mean. So what's happening at Asbury University, I don't know if they, I don't know if they're even thinking it through that deep. Lastly, I'll say this, revival, evidence of it always brings, up, brings about uh, amped up evangelistic efforts. And I said this earlier, I'll say it again, praise the Lord for those that were out there preaching the gospel. There's always a remnant, there's always a witness, and I know that was happening in pockets on that campus, and it's not all bad. So I'm praising God for that. We need to, we need to look for those uh, glimpses of, of hope that okay there is a gospel witness there but I will say this not many of the news outlets covered that part I have a few video clips where the gospel's being preached but I don't see it on Fox News hmm I wonder why it's conservative that's the problem people try to be conservative and they don't try to be biblical But evangelism should break out. Every home within five miles of that campus 
one of those students would be knocking on those doors. Every person would have received a gospel track or a conversation or seen a sign from one of those Asbury students. And Lexington, as far as I can tell, is the closest big city. There's got to be open air preachers out there from that university now every Friday night. Except they're probably not. It's going to be the same Christians. It's going to be the same remnant doing the same thing that they've always done. Little pockets. Like what we've got. Look, they're scattered all around. I don't see. Wouldn't it be great to have a great revival, Brother Kelly? Having the people come like they used to come in the 40s. I'm not saying it can't happen. I don't see it happen. Because when I see what happened at Asbury and I see how quickly people are deceived and how much of the masses get involved with that. And if you give any little kickback, you're just called a hater. I don't hate. Love is love. I love. I love. You love. We have to love people enough to warn them, love people enough to be concerned about something, love people enough to say, hey, look, you want to talk about the Holy Spirit, let's talk about if you've got it. Have you been born again? Have you been baptized by the Holy Spirit? I want to see some fruit. I want to see some fruit. 